Hey guys, uh, Rob here. First off, I want to say a big shout out to all the brothers at Clan TST on Facebook. Uh, those of you who might be traditional instinctive archers um, and you're on Facebook, you owe it to yourself to go there and check us out. Again, it's Clan, C L A N T S T, T S T. Um, good group of people out there from all over the world, lots of good information and opinions and whatever. Anyhow, all that aside, this will be my first instructional video, um, so please bear with me. Um, this time, what I want to talk to you guys about, there's been a lot of discussion on TST about gluing fletchings and so on and so forth, and different glues to use. Um, I have a little different angle that I come at it from, in that while I use super glues, uh, typically, uh, the subject of this video is going to be aero wraps. Now, I like to use aero wraps because as you can see here, aero wraps make for a really neat tail end of an arrow. Nice and, uh, you can see mine, I use uh, yellow aero wraps. And the really cool thing about aero wraps is, aside from making them look good, they're also fairly easy to crest onto. Um, I use uh, testers, model glue like you would buy for your kid's plastic race car, you know, plastic car to uh, crest onto them and it seems to hold up quite well. But the really cool thing about air wraps is you can use super glue, super glue your fletchings on and it takes to them really well. Um, so with the super glue you don't have fletchings that are going to potentially come loose. Uh, with other methods, uh, a lot of people will make sure they put a dab of glue on the front to, uh, of your fletchings to make sure they don't come loose. Obviously, you super glue the whole thing, problem solved. The really nice thing about air wraps, and that's what I'm going to do here, is you can install these and remove them fairly easily if you know how to do it. And when you remove these air wraps to refletch them, um, you remove it and you end up almost with a brand new shaft. Of course, it's already bare shaft tested and, and you know whatnot. So you pull the old one off, clean your shaft, and you put a new one on and you start over and it's as good as the first time you did it. Um, so that's the value I find in these. Um, they're really easy to use if you know how to do it and enables you to continually fletch and refletch your arrows and keep them always looking in top-notch condition. Anyhow, uh, now we'll start getting into um, some of the techniques that I use for accomplishing this task. And I hope you guys enjoy this and it becomes a, it's of some benefit to you guys um, and makes your archery hobby even that much more enjoyable. Okay guys, Rob back here with you. I'm actually going to start off with pulling a wrap off. Um, this is the major selling point that I would have if I was selling wraps, which I'm not. It just, it, it's one of the things that I find is the coolest thing about, one of the coolest things about these, aside from making your arrows look really good, um, being able to get these off. Um, and I'm going to try and do this and keep this all in focus. Uh, like I said, my first instructional video, so we're going to be playing a little bit with focus a little bit. Uh, maybe doing a little cutting and editing because I really want you guys to be able to see what I'm talking about. Um, the thing I like to use, some people will use steam off a steam kettle. I got the old uh, hot gun that I used from when I was doing radio control airplanes and so on and so forth. Anyhow, some source of heat. Now, what I want, what we're going to start obviously is with the seam and uh, trying. Okay, a little production hiccup there. Apparently my camera, uh, which is a really nice camera in video mode, only records for a uh, limited length of time. So you missed the first arrow wrap removal. So we're going to do another one. Um, this one's again a little bit ragged and I'm ready to throw some new fletchings on it. So anyhow, back to my hot milk or my hot, uh, or my heat gun. Um, I'm going to want to heat this up really good and you'll find that once I get this heated up really good this arrow wrap's going to come off like uh, there was a plague on this arrow and they just wanted to get out of town. So let's get going here real quick.
there might just need a tad bit more, but it's definitely wanting to come off of there. Just a quick note, some people might go, oh my gosh, hot, no, hot gun like that, you're going to put a lot of heat into that arrow and you could compromise your arrow. And you know that thought occurred to me, but then I've tried this uh, other ways too. The other way is using it over steam, like a steam kettle or whatever, your, your tea kettle, to heat these up to pull them off. And I can tell you by having physically touched this stuff when I'm doing it, uh, if you do this over a steam kettle, you're going to heat that arrow up a lot more than you would uh, with this glue, this this gun, because this gun you can very selectively and carefully do um, your application of heat to get just enough without. With I'm sorry, I shouldn't have been talking. You you can use this to very carefully apply your heat so it's uh, get enough to do the job, but yet not too much. So I actually like this better than using the steam because when you're doing the steam, it's kind of hard to regulate. Um, and this works really great for me. Let's see here, find our seam, where are we at? You get this hot stuff hot enough, it actually, it'll actually almost fall apart. You don't even have to find the seam. Uh, it is going to get hot, so just be prepared. Your fingers might get a little warm doing this, but you can see just how easy that is. And I'll allude to it uh, once again. Uh, a lot of people might see this and go, well, geez, you know, how durable are those? Um, and I'm here to tell you this fletching and wrap you saw is about eight months old. And I've been shooting it constantly for that eight months. I'm not one of those guys that just goes out and squirts a couple arrows once a week. Uh, I go out as often as I can. My wife will attest to that. And so, although I don't keep an arrow count, um, these things get shot a lot and they're very durable. I don't know what else to tell you. Great way to go. Anyhow, we'll carry on from here. Let's uh, get this cleaned up and then we'll get on to getting a wrap back on it. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay, now back to cleaning. Um, really quite, uh, it's a fairly easy uh, task. Again, I don't get endorsements or whatever. It's just a particular product that I use um, to uh, get the adhesive that's left behind off because you're going to have a little bit of residue. And this stuff is also great for getting off, you know, your cresting. Um, or at least mine, I use uh, on the wraps and stuff, I use the testers model glue uh, again. Uh, like you get for your kids model um, Just to rewind just a short bit uh, Anybody who watches this might say wow how durable are those wraps? well That wrap that you just saw me pull off and the fletchings on it um, are about eight months old uh, and I don't just, I'm not one of those people that just goes out and shoots a uh, few arrows once a week. Um, I get it, my wife will tell you, I get out there every chance I get. And I don't keep an arrow count, but I shoot quite a bit of arrows. And it's proven to be very durable for me. So anyhow, I use this neat little product, Goof Off here. I found works the most effective for me. Now you can get Goof Off in many different containers uh, they have aerosol spray containers squirt containers i like this little cigarette lighter fluid type container because it allows me to uh, get the best control over how much i'm using not get it everywhere and uh, transversely it saves on my product so i'm not wasting a bunch of product squirting all over the place now what i'll do is i'll get a good little coating on a rag such as you see here and then we'll get up here 
and it might take you a couple of runs through the first time you're just going to start loosening the bulk of it and getting the bulk of it off now you're going to go through a rag this is you're going to end up waste you know get you an old rag something you don't care about don't use your wife's favorite chiffon shirt um, because that could get ugly real fast and again i can control it fairly well sometimes you got to get it a little bit fluid get a little bit on and if you really get busy with this cresting here you'll see i it'll it starts getting that oop, let's get back and focus there we go sorry guys kind of lost me there didn't you you see it just getting that old tester's glue cresting right off of there and i basically just continue to do that until i've got a clean shaft that i can run my fingers along and it's perfectly smooth and clean now yeah, we'll get on to the next portion which will be reinstalling the wrap here in just a second okay guys now on to the task of getting a wrap back on here now before we get a wrap back on i want to digress a little bit because for those of you who might choose to crest your own arrows here's a little side note that you want to think about now the arrow represented by the black ring is encapsulated in the in the wrap on the back end which is the blue ring now the wrap is long enough to where it's going to overlap <clears throat> now if you're going to be cresting it's important to think about this and think about which way you're going to wrap and here's why if you're cresting if you wrap an arrow such as this uh, and your cresting lathe is going to turn your arrow this way then as your paintbrush comes around here you're going to get a skip in that crest because it's going to fall off this ledge here and it's not going to recontact till it gets to say here so you're going to want to wrap it the other way and so by wrapping it the other way so that it's turning this way now your brush is coming around here it's going to fill in this little lip pop back up and continue on around and you're going to get a more seamless crest now the truth of it is is when you crest on wraps you're always probably if you really want a nice perfect crest you're going to have to come back and touch up here um, additionally if you're doing it this way you're not going to want your to apply your paint too heavy because you can get pooling in here and that pooling will spread out so anyhow enough of that just a thought about the way you uh apply your wraps now i apply my wraps obviously with that thought in mind um, and i apply my wraps from this direction and then roll in to accomplish just what i was telling you about now what i like to do is i need, like to get a nice clean glass surface or maybe a piece of tile whatever the case may be and get my establish a nice right angle here that way i can use the right angle of the glass to lay down my arrow and I can use this angle to lay down my wrap so I've got a nice place and that way when I do roll it and wrap it I don't end up with this wrap that's spiraling off in some crazy degree or crazy angle um, another little trick that I adapted from the window tinting business is how do I keep this all sorted out I'm not getting a tangled mess so what window tenors do is they like to use a um, uh, combination of like a little bit of soap and water when they're applying window tint and whatever and it's great for sticking a wrap to say especially like a glass surface and keeping it in place while you're getting that arrow on there and starting the, the wrap process additionally if a little bit of it does get on your arrow when your um when your wrap is coming over you can always squeegee that out, pressure that out, and it's not going to cause you a problem in the long run. So the first thing I'm going to do is spray myself a nice, just fine mist of this watery or this soapy substance. I'm going to get my wrap off here, and I like to just kind of restick it. And the nice thing, like I said, about this soap, soapy substance is 
I can get my wrap laid down here. Glue side up, get it nice and square, and it's going to stay there just because of the surface adhesion of that spray that I put on there. Just got to make sure I get it nice and square. And now it's as easy as this. I come back and I take my arrow, I line it up. I'm going to line line it up nice and square with the wrap and make sure it's all the way back to my knock and I tack it down there now that I get the arrow tacked you can see the wrap as I roll it is coming up with it now when I get it on the top I can push out get this edge secured really good and now I come in and I just keep rolling 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 and Voila, there I have a beautiful new wrap ready for fletchings. That was not time edited, folks. That's real time. Same thing with removing it. Uh, so you can see just how easy this makes it to fletch and refletch. Um, maybe we'll get into a little bit video. I've got a few tips on fletching uh, later. Uh, but for now, this concludes the uh, segment on wraps. And now I have a nice fresh brand new wrap ready for some new fletchings how about that and that quick that easy and i'm telling you it is durable like i said before um the fletching and wraps that was on here before were a good eight months old um experiencing solid shooting um sometimes arrows hitting other arrows and you know if i didn't hit a knock even if it ran down the side i mean it just dur they're just durable as i'll get out you know hope you guys enjoyed this hope it benefits you and maybe make your uh, arrow making a little bit more fun, pleasurable, and uh, with a lot less headache. Anyhow, y'all take care. And again, uh, once again, Clan TST on Facebook, guys. Uh, a lot of good people out there and a lot of good information. Enjoy. Take care. Bye.